What's up, everybody? I am Alexis Nunez, and I'm alongside Rodrigo Faez, my partner in crime, because this is La Liga Centro. This is where we're going to be talking about everything in La Liga, from the games that were, the games that are to come, how La Liga teams have been doing in Europe, as well as all of the juicy transfers, because we're getting pretty close to the summer window and we're expecting some big name moves probably some big names Kylian Mbappe to hopefully come to La Liga Rodri is over in Madrid right now I am in London um let's talk about the weekend that was Rodri because I was on FA Cup final duty watching Liverpool hoist yet another trophy you're back of course um in Spain so a couple of matches that were one dear to my heart though two teams that I absolutely adore which you know Atletico Madrid, Sevilla, um, still was a lot to play for because both of them wanted to secure their Champions League spots and they did it. We ended up seeing a draw, but who do you think would be happier? Hi, Alexis. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining us. Uh, well, this is the first time that you look so serious with me. Okay, don't know, worry about that. Weird. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, <laughs> strange. Anyway, yeah, uh, I think Atletico Madrid and Seville. Uh, I think it was like the the most rivalry game of the of the of the whole weekend because you know they have like a rivalry in between the crowd of Atletico and and Sevilla fans. Um, and and it, it, I think there was like a, an extra ingredient for for Atletico Madrid to take Sevilla out of the Champions League or at least. To, to delay uh, Sevilla to secure the uh, Champions League classification. So, you know, final draw, I think I think it was kind of fair uh, because Atletico Madrid did really well in the first half, but in the second half of Sevilla, uh, they went up, you know, in their in their performance. And, and I think it was kind of kind of fair, I mean, the result. And, and, you know, the atmosphere, the ambient, it was great. And even though, you know, there's a big name in that, uh, in that game, Luis Suarez. It was his last Atletico Madrid at home game. And that's why you know everyone was saying him uh, goodbye you know paying a great tribute and uh, tears yeah i mean that's why i always say that Atletico madrid knows perfectly how to make you know a farewell to the people i mean they they do it really really beautiful and they i mean they prepare everything so so nice you know uh taking care of all single details uh, that's why i think and i'm sure that luis suarez will take Atletico madrid in his heart forever I'm looking at the background of your shots and I'm so jealous that my background isn't as cool as yours, but we'll get there. We will get there. Yeah. Um, yeah, Luis Suarez, I suppose that was definitely the talking point. 34 matches uh, this season, 11 goals, two assists. I guess overall impact. Um, we know he was moved on from Barcelona probably when he didn't want to. We know he still has his house in Barcelona, but Atletico still made him feel like one of their own. How do you think? There in Madrid, how do you think he'll be remembered as one of the Los Grandes of Atleti or just as a good warrior? Yeah, I think he will be remembered as the, the hero of uh, last year's Liga, you know, when they won yeah. the Liga uh, again, you know, for the last time. And I think he was, uh, you know, mostly in the first half of the season, he was outstanding. I mean, he was like the guy that came from Barcelona with a broken heart, as you mentioned, uh, and say like, okay, I'm here to say and to prove Barcelona that they were uh, wrong about my about their decision of taking me out of the of the team. And he did it, and, and he proved that he's is still a top striker, a top player. And the thing is that, you know, after two years, uh, we know that the role of Luis Suarez last, I mean, this season, it hasn't been like, you know, like the proper one for, for him and, and even for Atletico Madrid. And that's why he he's leaving. But the thing is that he still wants to, to play for, for a big, big club in Europe uh, before moving to, for example, MLS or some kind of uh, similar leagues. And he still wants to prove that he's the man, that he's a striker. But let's see physically if uh, uh, he's fit enough to, to be there because, you know, in this season, he was kind of, you know, uh, struggling with that, you know, yeah. all, mostly outside of the of the area blocks. I mean, he's he's 35 years old. Um, yeah. I'm 33 and I, I feel my body breaking down. So I can only imagine <laughs> exactly how he must be feeling because as the boys on our other show, ESPN FC, say, once that body goes, you have it up here, but your body's just not going with it. And We'll get to talk about Luis Suarez a bit more because he's he's involved in some interesting rumors that especially broke even this morning here in England. We'll get to that in our transfer segment. Um, in the meantime, I suppose let's move on to the other team in Madrid, Real Madrid, the champions. They were away at Cadiz. Another draw, but let's be honest. We knew that Real Madrid have, I don't even want to say one eye on the Champions League final, both 
probably with their hearts on the Champions League final right now. The rest of the big guns, no Karen Benzema, no Vinny Jr. Though Marco Asensio did start, um, but Verde started. We'll talk about them to see what roles they may have in that Champions League final. But Cadiz in the relegation zone, I guess, how did you see this match? Well, the relegation zone is uh, top now at the moment. It's, it's the most emotional thing because, you know, we saw uh, this weekend how Cavi was uh, trying to, to make the comeback. You know, even they failed a penalty shoot against uh, Lunin, you know, uh, mm -hmm. to us. Uh, well, Real Madrid, another another goalkeeper who made a, a great performance. I mean, proving that he's one of the top, top uh, goalkeepers in La Liga too, you know, apart from, apart from Thibaut Courtois. And the thing is that, you know, if you see Cavi... By the way, Rodri is good friend. He's just name dropping here, but anyways, carry on. Here we have. <laughs> uh, anyway, the thing is that uh, I mean the game was kind of uh, strange, you know, in terms of Cadiz was, you know, it was a diehard game for them. But Real Madrid, they were like, I mean, they they have so many uh, quality players, and they are all of them focused on the against yeah. Liverpool, which is something normal, I guess. But, you know, anyway, the quality that they have make them to be, you know, maybe at the 50% uh, of their performance and still they're up there. They are up there and they are driving against a, a side against, I mean, like uh, Cadiz, who, I mean, they were dying for, for, for winning the game because yeah. they needed those three points against Real Madrid and they were really close to get them. But, you know, at the end, it was a, a final draw, which I think was kind of... Uh, for, for both teams so let's see what happens in the final leg because you know Cavi they will have a, a great great uh, job to to get the to get to avoid the relegation and as we were looking at with these matches because as we know Real Madrid already wrapped up the Champions League um the the La Liga title rather and so pretty much their heart is on the Champions League right now however these matches still are kind of you know, not auditions, but kind of auditions for some of the other players that may want a bigger role in that Champions League final. And I'm talking about the likes of Rodrigo because he's definitely done himself a world of good after um, his performance in the semi-final. Anyone in this match kind of would make um, El Mister Ancelotti kind of go, huh? Maybe well, you could have a role. To be honest, I mentioned before Lunin, he's from, from Ukraine. And, and, you know, since he came to Spain, everyone uh, was saying like, okay, why Real Madrid need uh, a goalkeeper of this level? Because he yeah. proved again, uh, not only in Copa del Rey this season, but he proved again that he may have deserved a little bit more minutes than, uh, than he already had. The thing is that, you know, if, if you see any press conference of Ancelotti, he's always saying like, he's kind of sad because of Lunin, because because of Dani Ceballos, because of uh, Iska, because he believes that they deserve more minutes. But, you know, that's how the, the Liga went uh, till this point. And that's why, I mean, he didn't rotate. He didn't give hmm. any any rest to, for example, Tony Cross, Thibaut Courtois, Benzema, uh, even Rodrigo Goes, that uh, for me in the, in the final rush of the season, have proved that, that he's even uh, more starter than Marco Asensio. So that's yeah. why, um, you know, I would get that uh, looning thing because... I think he he deserves something better. I don't know if in Real Madrid will get those minutes that he may look for, but maybe in some other team he will prove that he can be a top uh, goal, a, a top ten goalkeeper. I was gonna say I hope Thibaut Courtois doesn't watch this and sees that you're oh, I mean, leaning I mean, comes for his I'm, job. I'm sure that he agrees with me. I'm really sure. <laughs> yeah, because he's a good diplomatic man. Well, yeah. moving on now to Getafe Barcelona draws everywhere. Draws everywhere. That's how you know you're hanging on for the end of the season. Um, but with that draw, Barcelona secured second spot officially. And just overall, something interesting that Xavi said, he said, we saved a season that could have been worse. We have achieved our objectives from November. We would have loved and dreamt to finish like this in second place. And we we were there for Ronald Koeman's last match, um, that Clásico that went the worst way possible for Barcelona. Then Xavi came in, Barca were ninth. They've got into second. This is kind of like a trophy for them, isn't it? I know, I not do. for Barcelona, but for Xavi, yeah. for what he's done, because it was looking bad. 
Yeah, everyone is comparing here uh, Kuman against uh, Xavi, which is like, okay, Kuman did this and Xavi had made this. It's, it's like a, like an incredible debate from, you know, from Barcelona uh, people. For me, I think Xavi did it really well, really well. He proved that he's still really young. And when we say that people like Gabi, like Nico, Ansu Fati, Pedri, they need time. I, I say the same with Xavi because, I mean, this is the first... Uh, elite experience like a first top experience for for Xavi because he never trained and he never coached at that level and I think he did it pretty well uh I think he saved the year I do agree with yeah. that because with Kuman he was like a nightmare every every week and and I didn't see the the team like prepared enough uh to to face the rest of the of the season and would have been a a, a massive disaster if Kuman had been uh, the coach still till the end of the season that's why you know I I give credit to to Chavi, I think he deserves all the the ovation, you know, standing ovation for me and and, and and even for the rest of the crowd. Yeah, that's why we say we do this. Well done, and, Chavi. <laughs> but the thing is that you know, God saved Chavi because the game, you know, he, I was there for ESPN Plus, and it was a horrible game. It was horrible. <laughs> I mean, both both teams were like, okay, we only need one point to reach our target: uh, avoid the relegation for Getafe and the second place of the of the table for Barcelona. And they were like. They're not gonna fight each other, okay? Gonna fight each Holy other, chill. you know. And we were with the popcorns like this, and we were like, "Oh no, man! Oh no, man! Why? Why?" This? <laughs> you wanted to say something else? Don't worry, we get it. I know. I I'm know. surprised you stayed awake in that one, but I suppose overall, um, what if you had to name one thing this season that's impressed you the most about how Xavi's turned things around at Barcelona? What would it be? For me, the thing that stands out, and I remember. Because I did an interview with him, a flash as well, a couple of months ago. And I said, you know, one of the things we've noticed is that somehow you've got everyone actually fighting before they would lose. And, and you'd wonder what's going on at Barcelona. They almost look like Man United right now. Like you're losing, but you're not fighting. Now, of course you lose, but you go down fighting. Like even in the Supercopa, the Clásico in the Supercopa in, in Riyadh. I mean, they fought tooth and nail with Real Madrid eventually lost but Xavi says this is the proudest have been at that point of this team and I asked him if if are you happy with people naming this team or or recognizing this team as Xavi's team that fights and he says I will be happy if that's all people know us for and I think that that's that's what stood out to me for you what stood out I was gonna say like the how he treated the the young player talents uh, like for example Nick or Gabby, but I'm gonna say something different, uh, which may surprise all all the people that are uh, watching us. I would say that if you compare Sergio Busquets, you know, like the first half of the season of Sergio Busquets and the second half of the season of Busquets, it's just like a complete uh, different player. Yeah, and that's why Xavi, I think I give credit to him because he. He, he, he took the best uh, version of uh, Busquets back, which is something that for Barca is really important to have one guy who is veteran, who has experience, who all the people, uh, you know, all the Barcelona fans were like, okay, he's old, he's not able to play a game for Barca. And now everyone is like, okay, we're yeah. going to shout because the, he has proved that he's still uh, a talented guy. He's really important. And every time that Sergio Busquets is not on the team, you know, the team goes down and down and down. So that's why for me, I, I say that the best thing Xavi have done is, uh, is take him back because it's so important either for Barca or for the Spain national team. You know, if you look uh, further to Qatar 2022. Man management. I mean, people talk about managers and they forget how important man management is. And I think that's something yeah. that has surprised me to see how Xavi gets the young players to want to play for him. But even some of the senior players or some of the players that have been on the fringes like Dembele, yeah. how much credit do you give Xavi for the turnaround that we saw in Dembele and De Jong? I have, look, um, when Xavi came to Barca, I remember it was like one month, uh, you know, his first month. I remember talking to a player and he told me, my God, this is the first time in three years that we train. And I was like, what? What do you do with Setien, with Kuman, with the last yeah. season of Valverde? And he was like, no, we, we never worked that hard. And I was I was so surprised and so amazed by the way he was uh, saying that to me that I was like, oh my God, things have changed. 
And that's why, you know, I give credit to, to, to Chubby because you look something different. You look something, you know, completely opposite to, to Kuman era. And that's why for me, Bartha, uh, Bartha is, uh, I mean, well-deserved that second place of the, of the table. They did it really well in the second leg of the season. And I'm pretty sure that, I don't know if they're going to be next season at the same level that uh, Real Madrid, but they're going to be there because if you say, you know, or if you get the results from Xavi when he went to the bench of Barca till the end, you would see that the, the points that he got, they are really similar than Ancelotti. So what's up with that? Barca finally, finally on the right track yeah. then, which is good. We need, we need that rivalry. That rivalry yeah. is so necessary in La Liga. So, Every, every Barca fan would say here, if you comment below, that everyone, oh, well, you saying about uh, River Rim against Barca and Real Madrid, and Barca won nil four at Bernabeu, yeah. but it was an accident by Real Madrid. All right, time to move on now to our La Liga transfer rate. A lot of interesting potential transfers swirling around. Rodri's going to let me know if he's going to give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down because we still don't know. It's still early. The transfer window hasn't officially opened yet. So let's start off with our boy, Luis Suarez, who we were just talking. Uh, we knew he had to move on from Atletico Madrid. We were wondering where would he go back to Barcelona. But all of a sudden, I woke up this morning and all over the headlines, Luis Suarez potentially in an Aston Villa Sure, it's a little ex-Liverpool connection with Stevie G there. We knew that they've made Felipe Coutinho an official villain, if you want to call it that. So Suarez to Villa, Rodri, thumbs up or thumbs down? It would be, it, it be great for him, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, he's friends with uh, Stephen Gerrard. And, you know, as we mentioned before, he's still thinking that he can prove the, the world of football, that he can compete, you know, the high level. So why not? I think he knows perfectly Premier League. It would be a great sense for him to, to stay at least one more year, you know, in, in Europe. He's also been linked with Sevilla. Um, and potentially back to Barcelona. Are those thumbs up or thumbs down? Or you think below? No, I would say thumbs down. I mean, thumbs down because uh, I don't. I, I don't see to be honest, Seville, uh, Sevilla like uh, you know investing that kind of money on one guy who is uh, very, very old, very veteran. I don't. I don't see that. And and for Barca, you know, no way. So no way. Right after what he said about Barcelona board, I know that they changed and Bartomeu is not uh, the chairman anymore. But I don't really see that. I think that Barca is like thinking. You know, another kind of uh, striker another profile sure don't do it Luis it's like going back to an ex-boyfriend never a good wow. idea <laughs> take it from me <laughs> moving on now Sadio Mane Sadio Mane what a player um to Barcelona that's a wild report that we are hearing we know Barcelona's financial situation so I'm not sure how this would work Rodri but Sadio at Barcelona thumbs up thumbs down Thumbs down for me. Uh, I don't see Barca, you know, financial situation able to to go at that level. I may see Barca, you know, like uh, trying to to get, uh, for example, Lewandowski, like in a in a thirty million euros transfer or something like that. But I don't see Barca paying that amount of money uh, on Saudi Mane because I think it costs uh, even the double. I mean, it's too high for for Barca uh, cash now the moment situation. So that's why I don't really see that now in a way. I mean, I know he's got uh, just about a little over a year left on his contract, which is why these rumors have been swirling because Liverpool have not put anything in place yet. But I saw that massive smile on his face when I interviewed him after they won the FA Cup. And I really? don't think he is going anywhere. He loves his life at Liverpool. Um, as beautiful as the beaches in Barcelona are, I think he might <laughs> stick with the River Mersey for a bit longer. Moving on now, Ricky Puig, um, to leave Barcelona because... It has to be done, doesn't it, Rodri? Because he's clearly not getting the game time and he's in such a, a special kind of age to do it. So, um, what do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Thumbs up, yeah, uh, in this case. Um, the thing is that he only played against Getafe this weekend and he had the chance to, to be starter for Xavi and he never be, uh, he's never been a starter for Barca with, with Xavi. So I think, you know, even I'm going to tell you one thing, which, I mean, you could say like breaking news or whatever, Ooh. that, you know, Celta de Vigo is very, very, very interested on, on him because Celta de Vigo, um, they have Denis Suarez, former Barca, 
player mm-hmm. two, a Man City player two. But the thing is that, you know, they have a crash in between Dennis and the president of Celta Vigo. So that's why uh, Dennis Suarez is leaving at the end of the season Celta Vigo out of nowhere. But that's why Celta Vigo is really interested on uh, getting Ricky Boots for the next season. We don't know if it's uh, a loan, if it's a uh, transfer, whatever. And, and we know that uh, Ricky Boots will have more offers. He has to, to decide, but Celta Vigo is very interested on it. Oh, you heard it here first. Rodrigo Fire is dropping these little breaking news nuggets. Finally, um, Paul Pogba. Look, we know the hot mess. We know the hot <laughs> mess going on at Manchester United right now. Uh, he's heavily linked to the move back to Juventus, but he's also still being linked to Real Madrid. So thumbs up to Madrid or thumbs down? Let me ask Florentino. Oh, hello. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Okay, no. He says no. <laughs> He says, Forget no. about it. Computer says no. No, no. the thing is that uh, Real Madrid has been quite, quite interested on him, like uh, maybe for the past three years. But Real Madrid board always say about uh, Pogba the same. He's very, very talented, but he's very, very expensive for what Real Madrid is looking for at that position. Because we remember that they have Casemiro at that uh, mm-hmm. defensive midfielder position. So that's why they don't really need like a starter like him, and they don't need to to invest that amount of money on, on Pogba so that's why uh, you know and I'm getting a message from Real Madrid okay look at uh, Pogba's future on Juventus or PSG Ooh. right time to move it on to some hard questions now some over the top wild crazy questions that Rodri and I are going to have to answer if you guys have any please feel free to tweet us or comment us. We will definitely try and answer them because we know there's always hard ones out there. We've given given ourselves some hard ones now. First one, Rodri, will Benzema win the Pichichi again? And I mean, he's got 27 goals already. We're seeing a Karen Benzema that's just getting better with age, like my favorite bottle of vino tinto. Um, I'm going to... What do you think? And I'll tell you what I think after. So you, you want me to say this or you want me with the magic ball? Oh, check the magic eight ball and see. I don't, Will I don't know. Oh, yeah. As I see it, yes. Yes. He oh, says yes. He, yeah, he says yes. I mean, it could be interesting seeing Benzema uh, getting the Pichichi once again, you know, like the top scorer of the league next yeah. season. Uh, let's see, for example, which is something interesting for me, that if finally uh, Kylian Mbappé arrives to Real Madrid this summer, could be a great debate. And we can talk about this next uh, in the next episode because, I don't know, uh, what will uh, they think about Mbappé and Benzema? How would uh, Real Madrid combine both of them? But, you know, why not? I mean, Benzema is a top scorer, so, you know, not, never Never mind the age. Never mind. That's a good problem for Ancelotti to have. Do you know what? Yeah. I'll say with age, but we have a saying that says that lightning doesn't strike in the same place twice. And with oh, Mbappe man. coming, I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna probably say no. I'll say he'll be up there and he'll be in the conversation. He's not lightning. He's a thunderstorm. That's why. We may you know? have a oh, fair. He's a thunderstorm. We may. He'll be up there, but he may yeah. not win the Pichichi. We'll see well, this let's one. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Next tough question. Make a case for why Real Madrid won't win the title next year. Oh my God. Whoa. Oh my that, God. That's, that's a tough one because uh, Real Madrid for me is the main favorite for the, for the next season's uh, La Liga sure. title. The thing is that, okay, maybe if Barca comes up, you know, and the, the young players of Barca grow incredibly high next season, it could be something to, to think about uh, in Real Madrid. Like, oh man, those child those children you know they grew that much that now we're not gonna be able to to rewin the the title so i mean it's the only case in that i would say okay they're gonna win but i my main favorite for me is real madrid sure yeah it's honestly hard to choose against real madrid i was hoping i mean this season we saw sevilla giving us a decent run atletico yeah. madrid i don't know i think they left us with more questions than answers after this season and barcelona um we're gonna hope hope, wish, pray, uh, and see if they can make it a title race, but it's hard to go against Real Madrid. Final one, though. Name who will be the standout player, the player at Barcelona next season. Who's going to put in a serious performance for you? Okay, because everyone would say Pedri or Ansu Fati. Okay, I'm going to say a different one. I do agree that, you know, either Pedri or Ansu Fati will be up there, but I'm going to say that Nico Gonzalez, Nico Gonzalez, Oh. he's going to be there. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gabby, what about Gabby? You forget about Gabby? No, 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 no. Okay, 
Okay, I say that Nico is going to be one of the top ones next uh, year for Barca because, I mean, he's uh, young. I know that the things that, you know, physically he's top. I mean, he deserves even more minutes than he had and he's going to yeah. be there. Believe me. Do you know what? I was going to go with Nico as well. And then you did oh, take really? one of mine with Ansu Fati. I'm going to put Ansu Fati because this season has been an absolute nightmare with the injuries. I mean, all our hearts were broken each time we saw him get injured. And even though he only played like, what was it, like nine matches or something eventually, he still managed four goals coming back from injury. <laughs> this kid is just unreal, you know? Can't keep a good man down. But I'm going to name a player that I think has such an important part to play at Barcelona and sometimes goes underrated. And that is Ronald Araujo. I think oh, yeah. he's such a special player. And I know usually when we talk about standout players, we usually go for the attacking players, the ones that score goals. But I think Araujo, who's known to score a clutch goal here and there when they need it, I think what he's done so far at Barcelona with a steady head and, and that kind of presence that he has, I think he could be an underrated standout player. So he's going to be my pick. There you go. I agree. I agree. Oh, what a legend, Ronald. We love you. All right. Well, I think that's it. That's it for us. That's it for us um, with our first episode in the can. High five. Don't leave me hanging. Go. Okay. <laughs> thanks to everyone for watching we will be back like i said we'll be doing this bi-weekly um looking ahead especially to the next la liga season we will be there i will be there closer to rodri um much to his despair but we will be doing this all over again please look out for it right here on espn fc's youtube thank you very much for watching espn fc on youtube for more highlights analysis and exclusive content be sure to subscribe